good agents. It's Tristan and Nick here. Uh, Nick's got a great beard game. Is hey, uh, by the way, by the way, any, anyone is watching. Contrary to what Sunit thinks, this is not a webinar about how I grow my beard out. <laughs> I know. So let's not talk about beards, guys. It's not a webinar about how my beard lead generates the crap around all you guys. That's right, dude. Did you create a, a team of beards? Is that how it happened? Actually, um, everyone on my team is forced to grow a beard, and it's been really difficult for my wife. So, you know, let that. Uh, but I'll let it slide just this once. I love it. So today we've got Sunit and Barry, both are coaches, right? <laughs> With Club Wealth. I love it. And yeah. both of you, I, I just had to say your coach. Coach Sunit and Coach Barry. Hold and on a Professor second. Professor Nick and Professor Tristan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's going on? Sun Sunit and Barry actually have more credentials than us because we're just professors. <laughs> They're coaches and professors. I love that. We're in the presence of greatness, people. All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about teams, how to build a team from the beginning, the troubles we have, and all the way to, to where they're at. Because Sunit and Barry, you guys are doing pretty good from what I can see. Nick's doing great. I'm doing great. Um, but Barry, we just kind of really heard about you. We didn't really know you. We met Sunit a while ago. Right. And you came we out of left field for really us. Physically met either. So that's no, not dude, I, and I've never met. Dude, how tall are you? I am 6'4", but I'm 6'6 six, six with my heels. Yeah, you're too tall, dude. You're too tall. And he can dunk a basketball, he says. Dude. Yes, I can still dunk a basketball. That's nuts. Hey, wait, Sunit, yeah. how tall are you? 5'10 uh, and a half. How about yeah. you, Nick? You're 5'10, right? We've just, we've just, we've just figured out that Tristan's the shortest guy in uh, this world. I'm like the shortest. Well, guy. I'm 5'8". eight. I was gonna say that Barry is too tall to be on this webinar. <laughs> I think we're gonna cut you right now, Barry. That's it. Can I say about Barry? About Barry? Like Barry just kind of like, I mean, he's been around for 18 years doing real estate, but just kind of like came out of nowhere. <laughs> Like one day, so like show up. Barry's there, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I got a team of eighteen people." I'm like, "What? Where have you been?" <laughs> oh, it's kind of cool. Hiding. We just got the internet in Virginia, so it's <laughs> that's, that's what it was. That's true. That is uh, true. And indoor plumbing. <laughs> well, that thank God for that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's get started. I think we have enough people on. So today we're going to talk about building teams, and I wanted to start with Sunit. Sunit. You haven't been in real estate for as long as we have. I think you're probably the newer one out of the four, right? Definitely. So what what do you see? What When you started, you started as a single agent. You didn't say, hey, I'm going to build out a team. So what did you see being the, the grounds for building a team? Why a team? So, um, you know, my experience, you know, I've only been a realtor, I think, for four and a half years, full-time realtor. I was in mortgage and some some, some other industries prior. And I always really liked being a business owner, right? So my first two years as an agent, and honestly, it was before I found out about lab codes and all this other stuff out there. I thought that whatever broker-specific CRM was the one, there was one team in the office, everyone was solo agents. Then, you know, I left that brokerage, went to another more popular brokerage, got on lab codes like the first day I joined that brokerage saw all this stuff that was happening and for me being a business owner is really more exciting than the day-to-day -day grind of an agent so you know i got into coaching talking to tristan and nick both of you guys have been instrumental in a lot of my business decisions very now and um for me the team was just a natural progression of what i like to do more all right Nice. And how about you, Barry? Barry, just so everyone knows, you've got a baby in the background. How old's your baby? Five months. Five months. And you're you're the man in charge of the baby today, right? Yeah, work from home Wednesdays. So nice. That's, that's, I that's love it. Doing. Yeah, baby. Don't worry about it. Barry's doing his job as a father. Can we, can we bring the baby on to the webinar? Yeah, I know. Show us the baby later. Can you make this webinar a little cuter and bring that baby on? Yes, I will in just a minute. Okay, awesome. Alvin, Alvin Tapia says, I'm not liking this topic. 
<laughs> I love Alvin. Alvin's awesome. <laughs> All right. So Barry, tell us why you started a team and how long ago you started one. <clears throat> started the team four years ago and it was because five years ago I sold over a hundred homes by myself and I looked at my wife and I said, I am freaking miserable. Um, didn't have admin. I didn't, I was a part of a very small real estate company. I wasn't exposed to all the cool, you know, national brands and all that stuff. And so um, I decided that I would build a team, not so that I could get rich, which there's nothing wrong with that, but I built the team to maintain uh, being able to pay my bills, like my mortgage and groceries, right? And that's reasonable. Um, and uh, have a semblance of quality of life. And, uh, and so every decision I made over the last four years wasn't necessarily just you know, what's the bottom line? How am I going to make money? But it was just generally speaking, trickle down for myself to my admin and my agents. How can I bring balance to my life and their life and create an environment where we all make a living? And then now five years in, I'm like, wow, that was a great business model. <laughs> 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 Looking back, you know, it's all about quality. Uh, you know, quality doesn't make you money right away, but um, if, if you do the right thing at the right time long enough, the dividends pay off. So that's pretty much what happened. Nice. So I, have a question. I got a question. So we're actually, Tristan and I are obviously with the same brokerage, but you guys are with completely different brokerages. So where did you learn Barry specifically for this question? Where did you learn a team model from and where did you, you know, how did that, how did you figure out that structure? Uh, so when I began to investigate, I'm a part of Better Homes and Gardens, and I was at a conference in Coronado, California, and they had a roundtable discussion on teams. And <laughs> I went to the roundtable to learn. And so I'm sitting with like seven people and all seven of them pretty much said the same thing. I've had a team for a long time. I used to have like 15 agents. Now I have one or I used to have eight agents and now I don't have any. And and so that didn't vibe with my whole quality of life thing, right? I'm not interested in a revolving door. And, um, and so I re reverse engineered kind of what was standard thought. Standard thought was, I'm important. I'm generating business. You're a buyer's agent. You're not important. Therefore, you do all the work. I make all the money. And so uh, I decided that I would kind of reverse that a little bit and, and say, let's split the work and split the money. And then as I started to sell a lot, my quote work, was automation. So like what used to be me doing it and them doing it is now them doing it in really cool systems, which is why like I'm wearing a hat and a t-shirt and I have eight closings this week. <laughs> nice. What's the average price point in your um, town? Uh, town? Uh, average mm -hmm. price point in my market is 185,000. Um, slowly over the last few years, we've eked up personally to, you know, my team to an average price point of about 260. So uh, we're above average, but we do not discriminate. We take them big. We take them small. We take them ugly. We take them pretty. Nice. I like that. So Barry, so, um, <clears throat> so the automation is, is all you, right? So your agents get the benefits of the systems that you set up for them, right? So basically you have nurtured, uh, do you, have you nurtured those, those leads that come in and then through the automation, and then hand them off to your to your to your agent, so they kind of know what where that where that lead is in the process. Yeah, I, basically the automation is designed to do one thing: get the lead to respond. Once the lead responds, the team is pinged, and uh, and they do what they do. And so my kind of value proposition is: I'm not making you comb through 100 to talk to three. I'm combing through 100, and I'm going to help you focus on those three. Um, and then. Um, even still with that, I'm finding that, um, I, so I have a cold lead campaign. So the leads uh, that haven't had any activity for a month, we have an agent legend campaign that pushes out to them that I record the voicemails, I'm writing the text, it's coming from me. And uh, overwhelmingly, the people that are cold that respond, like 65, 75% of them bought a house with somebody else. So 60 days of that, I was like, okay, I'm gonna hire some ISAs. <laughs> Because like, there's like so much money we're leaving on the table. So Tristan and Sunit, and Nick, you, you know, you guys, uh, you know, TMT, uh, we've been talking <laughs> and um, uh, you, uh, your advice has helped me to kind of start to integrate um, ISAs into it. And so I, that's a new venture for me that I'm really excited about. 
All right. Well, Barry, Sunit, that's that's good. But let's start with let's start with the beginning. All right, because I, I want to take everyone, I want to take the audience through the process of of this, the beginning of the team, the middle and where you're at now so that people can see the progression. And so people can see how easy it is to run a team. There's no problems, nobody hates you, you don't lose anybody, and you make a lot of money and you drive a Rolls Royce, right? So I want everyone to hear So let's start with Sunit. Sunit, can I have the team structure? What does your team look like with agents, count, and your staff? Okay, so currently there is there is me, and I'm doing about ninety percent of the listings. Um, I have uh, twelve local agents here on my team. We got some expansion stuff going on. We can talk about later if you like. Twelve agents here, and then two admin staff, right? And one guy is kind of operations manager. He's also a seasoned transaction coordinator, so he has those kind of roles. And then I have another admin staff for just data entry and little day to day. Nice. Okay, so that's your structure. Barry, you want to go get the baby and then you can answer our question? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Sunit, what's up with your agents? Uh, you know, Jay Lieberman's in my office. He has a question. This is for any of us. Question for any of the guys. How long did your first hire stay with you? So um, my first hire stayed with me from the day I decided to start a team, which was, I mean, I can look through the text messages with you, Tristan, to figure out when it started. But um, so last summer, oh my God, what a cutie pie. Um, last summer to when I switched brokerages two months ago. Oh, nice. So he's been with you for about a year, just over a year. Um, no, I say June to like, May, so just about a year. Okay. So when you switched brokerages, did people did some people not come with you? Yes. All right. So Sunit, Sunit was with Keller Williams, and you switched over to what's the company you switched over to? Home Smart. Home Smart. And when you made the switch, some people didn't come with you. What was the reasoning? Um, some people were just. I mean, change is hard for a lot of people, right? And especially with the brokerage switch. You have a level of comfort and camaraderie and you know what to expect. Um, and I guess I'm kind of a rogue that way that I love the switch up and going in and switching go up. Right? Yes. How many, how many people, did, how many people do you think you, um, do you think you think you didn't come with you? Um, so at the time, I think there was like six, there was, there was five total agents. Two of them stayed at Keller. Okay. One had just had a baby the week prior to. Oh, wow. But she still hasn't joined over here yet. And that's okay. I'm still great friends with both of them. No yeah. hard feelings at all. Perfect. Yeah, I, mean, I guess, yeah, having the baby and then making a switch to a new brokerage, that's like a lot of change all at once. Yes. yes. A lot. And she's coming by today to hang out and have a chat. So, what? All right, cool. Nice. Cool. How about you, Barry? What's your structure look like right now? Did Barry freeze? Is that his frozen face? There, it there is. he is. Yeah, sorry, I lost you guys. Barry was like, <laughs> I was like, is that your frozen face, dude? That was um, the internet. You know, we just got it. So, <laughs> Barry, you got, Barry, you have a team of how many? Eighteen. So, sixteen agents, four admin. Three out of the four are licensed, and the fourth is getting ready to be licensed as well. And, and my admin, like, are super important. I know we all say that. They're all super important. But I have them get their license. And then um, I try to reserve referrals for them, like, so that they basically double their income. Um, so I kind of peg them deals and stuff like that. So it works out to where they get to, they get to feel the rush of that big commission check along with the rest of the team. So, Barry, with the uh, buyers, agents, that you have are they just buyers agents or are they are they split do they do both i mean they only get by see 12 of them only get buyer leads for me but um when they meet there's a lot of buy sales and i'm not going to i know a lot of teams will take it and say like you know we'll move it to the listing side i'm not saying i'll never do that but right now the way that it works you know if they struck up a trust with that person i let them you know 
get the listing. And All right. we still split it 50-50. We split the marketing budget 50-50. Um, and, uh, you know, we try to funnel the buyer's leads that come off the listing back to them. And then the other four are more advanced uh, agents. And um, I actually have them go on listing appointments for me as well. Nice. So this is a question for everyone from Pete Gettle saying admins slash support staff, should they be licensed or not necessary? So mine aren't. Um, I would love it if they were. Uh, haven't gotten there yet. Uh, my next um, admin staff will, I'll be looking for someone with a license. And I think it'll be my wife. How about so. you, Nick? What do you think? Well, I mean, my admin is Ann Baldwin. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. But she, but she's licensed. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I feel like um, there's a lot more she can do. You know what I mean? Um, she can upload listings in the MLS. Uh, you know, she can, if I need her to set appointments for me uh, or for some of our agents or whatever the case may be, you know, there's a lot more things we can do. If, she, if I needed to host an open house, you know, she can do that. And every now and again, she does actually take a buyer. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's my admin is my licensed real estate agent of a wife. So I, I I'm i I'm leaning towards that. I think I'd love for all my admins to be, to be licensed. Uh, Jacob, my main ISA, he's licensed and uh, my operations manager isn't, but I'd like for her to be soon. So how about you, Barry? What do you think? I, uh, I've never had hired anybody with uh, experience. So um, it really was just more of, do they, do they seem to have a track record of intelligence at all? Like, you know, <laughs> you know, and then would I want to see them every day? Um, like, are they nice to me? Uh, are they, they have bad attitudes? I know it sounds, it sounds silly, but like, that's kind of my bar. Like I haven't used the disc profile. I've just basically, like, I just ran an ad, my assistant for four years, personal assistant, um, is having a baby. She just wants to be an agent now. And so, um, I ran an ad. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But it's, yeah. It's yeah. Just, you can hold um, your baby, bro. That's fine. Five months, man. Five months. I love it. Um, yeah. Um, so uh, I had 150 resumes, and um, I said I don't want experience. I think we kind of set the bar so high, but I love to teach too, which makes it kind of easy. Hold on, let me get him. No problem. So while he's getting his baby team structure, we've got we've got our our, our teams. We've got the amount of admin we have. Hey, baby, what's your baby's name? Dex. 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 Hey. All right, so okay. we've got the teams and the structure, but how do we hire guys? Because as we're starting a team or even as we're growing and we wanna expand and we wanna get bigger, where do you go to find agents? We touched on this yesterday a little bit with the webinar with my Outdesk, but what do you guys do? Barry, what do you do when you wanna hire? Where do you look for? So I've never uh, recruited. Um, I uh, basically will, I started with two, a waiter, an appraiser, and a contractor that wanted a career change. Waiter, and I started and contractor. It sounds like the beginning of one of Nick's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Did they all walk into a bar? <laughs> yes. Um, and then, so then, basically, what happens? They all did really well, and then um, the other waiters and waitresses and their sphere wanted to hear about how they went from making you know thirty thousand dollars a year. And I remember. You know, when you first start a team, you're probably going to make a little bit less than what you did when you're on your own, but your life's going to get better. And um, uh, I remember my the one agent who's still on the team, she was a waitress for 10 years, and she bought a uh, Land Rover, and I was driving a Volkswagen. Right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then she took her family on a cruise. And, um, and so <laughs> obviously, all of her friends and family were like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And so when you take, when you multiply that, times five people and 10 people um, and you're giving them quality of life, you're using good systems, they tell their friends. And so I am getting ready to start actually recruiting. Um, uh, it's uh, some cool ideas that I have, but um, it's really just been, oh, you like people? Okay, come on. And then um, the way that my team set up, they don't, they only sell. They don't write offers. They don't, um, you know, so I've tried to, melt it down to so that they do the one thing that they can do. 
All right, we'll get to that structure. We'll get to that structure. That's part of the marketing technology systems that, uh, but Sunit, how do you hire agents? Where do you find them? So um, two, like two major ways is I love uh, the site Wise Hire and I have- Wise Hire, how do you spell that? W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E. And they just basically hit all the job sites. So I am running about with the expansion, I don't know, like 20 different wise hire ads. Um, wow. And um, so you get a whole bunch of resumes. I mean, when you're getting resumes, how do you decide who you're going to interview, who you're not? So I get a whole bunch of resumes. Some of them are gas station attendants in Pakistan. I don't call those guys. Um, <laughs> but um, basically, I'll talk to every licensed agent, right? And for, for me, um, if they have a disc profile, great. If not, if I give them the link, I find that some people will say, well, what the heck is this personality test? They've never heard of it. So um, I'll have them all come in. And what I look for is smart and are they coachable, right? So, and, you know, friendly and mm. can speak properly, right? So, so what, um, I'm hearing, what I'm hearing you say with are they coachable and friendly is do they have the right character for growth? There? Sure, exactly. Yeah, and the coachable part is really big for me. Uh, That's really important. I agree. With you. How about you, Nick? Dude, where do you find the agents that you've been getting on your team? So, <clears throat> my team, as you know, I was on my mother's team for the last decade, and so my own team is now only eight nine months old. But um, we, one of the agents I actually found in lab coat agents. And nice. Yeah. So that worked out well. Should we yeah. all post hiring now on lab coat agents? <laughs> no, no. Just, um, I'm joking. It was a joke. It was an agent that, it was, an agent that uh, was in the group. She came to like a mixer that I did. And then she just kind of like started reaching out on Facebook and one thing led to another. We brought her onto the team. She was in another, she was at another brokerage for 14 months, didn't do a single deal. And she came to us and she's got a deal. She's done a deal a month since January. So oh, we're nice. excited about that. Uh, wow. The second agent actually was a new agent to our market center who was in the productivity coaching. Um, uh, there's a productivity coach and there's about 20 or 25 agents in the productivity coaching it's all for new agents and so i just met her and started talking to her and she just like had so much just passion about life and everything and so we brought her on and uh she's been like doing an amazing job and so we just made a third hire it's a guy um and that hire we made after we went to career visioning which is the keller williams hiring course in Manhattan and we learned a heck of a lot there and we put him through the KPA, which is a Keller personality assessment. And we did like four or five separate interviews with him and he just ended up being a really great fit. So he's a new buyer agent and he's also going to be an in-house ISA for us. Well, Nick, do you have, do you have I'm, a having, I'm having coffee with an agent on Thursday who I've been really impressed with in my market center as well. So I just like get to meet people and talk to them and, you know, see if they fit and vibe. And once in a while I'll send a lead to an agent in my office and I will kind of gauge how they're following up with that lead and how they're reporting back to me. And if I feel like I dig the way they're doing that, then I'll ask them if they want to have a cup of coffee and sit down and talk. Do you have an agreement? Dude. What? I, I really like that, Nick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I that's what I do. Like we get so many leads a month that like sometimes my agents get overwhelmed, so I got to hand them out. And um I kind of test the waters with other agents to see how they handle it when I send them one. No, oh, that's smart. That's so great. Guys, do you guys all have agreements with with the agents that you hire that that outlines the splits, expenses, everything? 100%. Yeah, but, we do. I did about a, I started that about a year ago. How long have you had a team, Barry? Four years. Right. Four-ish years. So I had a, I've had a team since 09, and I didn't have an agreement for years. 
<laughs> well, it makes me feel better. Yeah, so don't worry about that. And it caused a lot of problems. Yeah. So first, first I had, you know, a draft of yours from, uh, you know, Tristan, and then when I switched brokerages, I got one from uh, Brian. And Brian is really – you want to share that? You want to share that with uh, with the panel, with uh, the attendees here? If you have a copy, um, I, I could ask my assistant where yeah. it is. Because Matt Matt Fagioli is asking for Andy Kantz wants one. A few other people are raising their hand here. Okay, you, yeah, can, I mean, you can do that later. That's fine. They can hit you up through that. Um, so next question, guys. You've got somewhat of the team structure. We've got a little bit of the hiring, right? But to me, the most important thing has been for teams, for maintaining a healthy team, has been a culture, a really good culture, which I didn't have for years. And maintaining a, a healthy flow of leads uh, combined with the education for the team. So education meaning, hey, look, this is what you're going to do with the leads that you get. This is how you approach them. And... This is also how you lead generate on your own, separate them from what I'm giving you, right? So can you go over first, Sunit, I'm going to go to you. Can you go over somewhat with the culture? How do you maintain a healthy culture in your team first? Um, so, right, I mean, so I feel like we have the culture that I lay, that I kind of, half right which is yeah you're pretty laid back easy going um you're not you're not a micromanager right i mean maybe not but i do watch everything i mean i'll i'll talk to barry and we'll look, have looked through like five thousand leads in one evening to see <laughs> what the follow-up's been on them right so i obsess on that little stuff but yeah. i am laid back and i mean people know me and i'm a pretty you know chill guy um for the most part so i mean that's my i mean i'm sure like the same with you guys a lot of my agents they aren't required to come to the office we have a weekly meeting we have our client events and our daily battle, right so we all get to speak every day and see each other once a week okay nice um so, so i have a question here from sophie langcourt she says can we elaborate on, on culture i think ultimately culture is is the way that our team runs and functions together. So it's that it's that vibe that everyone has. Some some companies and teams have this culture of like being a victim of blaming each other all the time. It's all about numbers. It's a boiler room, right? And then other teams are, are really good. They have a great synergy. They work together, and and it's just really nice to see that too. So that's kind of what we mean, Sophie. That that part of culture. Um, Let's see. Apologies. Krista Hines, if you've covered this already, I'll watch when it's posted later if needed. Do you bring on buyer's agents for a salary? Do you offer base? Oh, uh, we'll touch that on a little, a little bit later, Krista. We haven't covered that part yet. <laughs> Culture-wise, uh, Barry, uh, I'm assuming your culture is just like all, all the rest of us here. I mean, you've got your baby there, bro. That's something you would do for sure. So. Yeah, I mean, like... Uh, the friend in realty like whole concept is like we want people to feel like if they were calling a buddy from high school um, the same like no nonsense do you like it do you like the house no okay we'll find you one that you like you know that kind of approach um, and then um, I'm very very fortunate to um, to be able to provide for my family and be a part of conversations like this and so I'm just like I think an attitude of gratefulness uh, and uh, and service, not just like, not customer service. I mean, legitimately like putting other needs, others needs above your own. It's created an environment where um, uh, people like coming to work. They, they don't, it doesn't feel like boiler room. Not that there's anything wrong with boiler room because some people. No, there that. isn't. There's, yeah. access, you know, we, we usually associate with people. Like you said, you mentioned when you said you're hiring, you said, was it Sunit? You look for, you look for in essence, the character, right? And then, uh, Barry, you said you were looking for somebody that's nice, somebody you can actually yeah. work with and enjoy seeing every day and interacting with. I right. think all four of us have that same mentality, right? We want right. a culture where we can actually show up to work and not be like frustrated and stressed about the whole process. 
Right. So yeah, that's the culture we bring. Nick has a good culture with his team. I know it's newer, uh, but Nick, how do you maintain that culture, man? Your team is newer and I think it's doing really well. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I try to be as positive as possible and I try to let them know that, you know, they're, they're, th that I can, they can come to me with, with whatever they need. And, and if they need any guidance or assistance or whatever the case may be, but for us, um, you know, everyone has families and, um, they, some of them have babies are littler than ours. Uh, so we're only actually in, in an office setting together for like four hours a week, two hours on Tuesdays, two hours on Thursdays. And that's only because a, a lot of, most of my agents are brand new. So I just want them to get that like team feel when we're in the same room together, all of us, I mean, we get a heck of a lot done, you know? And so I'm seeing them on the phone. I'm watching what they're doing. I'm able to, you know, give them uh, guidance and suggestions at how to better talk to leads that they're on the phone with. Uh, we like to role play every Tuesday. We talk about, you know, what we're up to, what we're doing, who they're working with, who is not buying homes and why not, and what we need to do to maybe, you know, switch something up a little bit. It's just, I think that team camaraderie is really healthy a couple times a week um, because you can get into a slump, right? And then when you're together, you get just like this energy. At least I do. <laughs> no, I agree. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I don't really expect too much of them. Like I expect them to update me, um, you know, every day on what they did that day because I don't see them. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, so that's, and I expect them to just kind of be in the office with me every Tuesday and Thursday for, for two hours each time together. And, you know, for the most part, it's mobile. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we're still a new team. We're, we're still finding our way every single day. But I really think that that goes for every team. You're, you're finding your way every single day. There's always something else you could be doing or changing. Um, That's so and, true, man. I mean, look at all our conversations every day that we have, guys. I mean, it's oh, all yeah. For all of you guys who are watching who don't know, the four of us are in a group chat together. We're just a giant mess. So <laughs> it's like it's so much fun. What are you doing? You did this. I got to try that. I'm copying you. No, I'm going to do that. And you know what? That, it's a good point that you bring up because, uh, yeah, I've been running a team since 09, but it's been so disastrous. Like, you don't see how terrible yeah. it is. That's, and that's why I really wanted to focus on with Tristan. Culture. You're like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Culture, yeah. culture has been the, the downfall of some years that I've had. And, and now for many years of having the crappiest culture on the team, I finally have the culture that, that I've been wanting for years. And it took, it took me and my team leaders firing half of our team and putting in the right person in charge. Now that we have the right operations manager, our culture has blossomed because that's that's kind of like the head of the whole team even though you know i'm the one leading it they see her they talk to her they engage with her the most so it's really important who you put in charge because it could really be disastrous so well you know yesterday we were talking to my out desk about hiring and so i recently had to make my very first fire and it was like a very difficult like decision to make and it was really like it took me two or three months to actually figure out whether it was them or me. Right. And so, um, it was a very difficult decision for me to do, but after a lot of back and forth and a lot of handholding, you know, I realized that it wasn't me. And I think that's an extremely important thing to understand when, um, you know, when you're making hires and then if things aren't working out right at first, look inside yourself and, and figure out if, if they're not succeeding because of you, right? Yeah. Um, you got to trust your gut on that stuff, man. I mean, you yeah. have to. And something I read from Darren Hardy is the longer you keep a person who is not producing up to par, not being as present as, as they need to be, you're actually hurting them by not letting them go sooner because they could have another opportunity that would help them feed their family. Well, what happened in a nutshell was I felt that the team structure wasn't the right time for, for this agent in this, in this moment in her life. Like I felt that 
having me hold her accountable was holding her back because it was putting too, way too much stress on her at this point in her life. Um, so who's to say that later on it won't it won't it won't be a different situation? But you know, I think that the team structure was hindering her from kind of running thing, doing things the way she wanted to do it. So it's all good, but um, you have to look inside yourself first to figure out, you know, who, who's at fault in that situation. Yeah, I agree. All right. So on to the next part of this, which is your, your sales team. You've given me a breakdown of how, how your team looks, but your sales team, I know this question came up uh, three times, but I didn't answer it. Here is the answer. I'm going to ask all three of you and that's, in regards to lead generation, whether they're farming, door knocking, cold calling, you provide leads. What does that look like in your team? Uh, Barry, we're gonna go to you first. What does that look like in your team? Do you provide all the leads? Does your team have to go out and prospect? What's what's it look like? Yeah, so um, I, uh, I'm not really, I don't wanna invest the time of being like, um, uh, the, the guy at the country club that's networking and, um, you know, I just, I would rather spend time, you know, generating leads online, cultivating relationships with people. And so I've kind of embodied that with the team is we're heavy with not only Zillow and Realtor, but pay-per-click and Ylopo and, you know, all these real geeks, all these websites. And, um, and so I'm funneling candidly too much business to them and I, I don't think they can handle it right now. Um, and so uh, we're working through that problem right now. Um, and I, I will tell you, uh, folks that are starting a team, something that I've found, I kind of had a different split for different scenarios, right? So if I provide you the lead, they got one split. If they provide the lead, they got another split. If it was a listing, there was another split, no matter where it came from. And what I'm finding is they're conducting themselves the same way I would, and they're gravitating towards high margin activity. So if I tell them, you know, you'll make more if, sorry, you'll make more if, um, if you go get your friends to buy a house. Well, like some of the go-getters always are selling houses to their friends. Now, like I'm still, I'm still making money off that, that, but not as much. And so we're going to be transitioning. Um, it doesn't matter where the lead comes from anymore. Um, that it's always going to be the same split. And that's 50, 50, um, right? Yeah. 50, 50. All right. That's uh, what I run too. I run a 50, 50, no matter what. Yeah, it's just, it, it makes really good sense. Um, and this is one of those things that, you know, I'm just learning as I go. Um, fortunately, I'm learning a lot faster because of groups like Lab Coats and, um, you know, other masterminds that I'm a part of. But, um, you know, it's just something that I had to experience to understand that it, you're going to have people that complain, well, I generated this business. Why are you, you know, why are you taking half? Um, and um, it just, it needs to be, it is what it is, you know? Um, right. I'm not mad at him for thinking that way. That makes sense. Sunit, how about you, bro? Um, so I um, do provide a ton of leads. How many leads a month are we looking at? Um, <laughs> Barry. Um, um, I think it's right around 700 and it needs to be less. I, it's, it, it's cut, as you guys can all, you know, say, there's, it's, it's hard to get that number dialed into what you want it to be. 700, a lot of great leads. Um, and, you know, if they aren't doing enough business, then they should definitely be doing open houses, door knocking, all this. And But can you force a person to do that? No. Am I very happy if they're just working my leads and doing great? Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Um, what I found, which is different, and I know both Barry and I and Tristan and I, have had this conversation is I do pay more if it's a self generated deal. Cause what I found is sure some of the agents will go after that stuff. But I mean, if, a, if another deal is in their lap, they're not going to turn it away. And if you keep them busy with enough great leads, then those leads are being worked. Right. And interesting. And I have it written out on my bulletproof contract. With my so you're saying, contract. you're saying if they bring in, a buyer or a seller, you give them like a 60 40 type of thing instead of a 50 50. Higher than a 50 50. Yeah. Got it. All right. Cool. How about you, Nick? How does it look for you, man? Lead wise, yeah. everything. So <clears throat> our split is higher if they bring some. I mean, they get more if they bring, they bring somebody. 
But what I do, what I what I do for everyone we bring onto the team is their first deal they can keep a hundred percent. Oh, that's cool. That's a good start. Your team. Oh, yeah, me yeah. Too. I like that. So the I don't take anything from the first deal because um, I want them to I want them to get it. You know what I mean? I want them to go get that first deal. I want them to feel what it's like to get your first check. And I'm so, copying that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. I'm dude. totally copying that. I'm right. You have no idea. Like, it's, it's, been done. Yeah. They, it's, they're like, and, they, and, and like one of my agents was like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. Like, and her first deal is going to be 450000 Wow. So, I mean, you know, she's going to make a good deal of money. And I just want her to feel what that feels like. <laughs> Um, Super cool, dude. But uh, yeah, so it's the hot. It, the split is higher if they bring their own, if they bring their own um, business. So I encourage them to do open houses for other agents in the office. You know, I encourage them to kind of like you know get in touch with their sphere of influence and do all that stuff. We we bring we have we have about three hundred and three to four hundred leads a month. I think it. Where are you getting your leads from? And I'll circulate through everybody. Where, where do most of your leads come from? So Wailopo, Realtor, and Craigslist are our three main sources. How about you, Sunit? Um, we get a ton of the free stuff on Facebook. We do paid Facebook. Realtor.com, as you guys know. Um, Zillow. Um, some PPC. Um, but, I mean, mostly the portal leads because I found that they should convert higher. I agree. How about you, Barry? Yeah, so the Zillow and Realtor, uh, not numerically uh, as far as the number of leads, but the number of closings, uh, we find a higher conversion rate with those. Pay-per-click, uh, driving traffic to Real Geeks with an AdWords campaign, that's converting high. Um, yeah. Ylopo hasn't started yet. Uh, looking forward to getting that going. Um, and uh, believe it or not, the sign call uh, routed through call action um, has, uh, it, I'm, I'm averaging about 100 leads a month um, from inbound phone calls and uh, from, so that is awesome. from for sale signs or just open house signs or what type of signs? Um, so for sale signs, we're averaging 60 calls, 70 calls a month. Wow. Zillow profile, 80 calls a month. From the what? I'm sorry. Zillow, Zillow profile. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I have a different, I have like 17 different phone numbers. <laughs> Yelp, uh, about 50 phone calls. So it's like 300 inbound total a month. And uh, it's it's been really, really, really good because it routes into our CRM. And uh, so I'm able to track like, hey, uh, John Smith called on Yelp yesterday at two o'clock and you got it. Tell me about that call. And, you know, I can manage those inbound calls really well. So that's actually, it's coming up on a, a close second and third but the ROI is much higher because I'm not paying for, I mean, I pay, I bought the sign, what, like a year ago? I don't know, but I'm, I'm still getting calls off of it. Wow. That's really smart. So you put, you put your phone, that call action phone number, you have different ones for different, different things like different signs, Yelp, yep. Craigslist, Zillow, everything. Okay. Got everything. it. So this way yeah. you can track them. Got it. All right. So Jesse's a smart dude, man. I, I like, I love call action. That's a call action number right there on my sign. I have 19 of them, but not. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So I let's go one. over. <laughs> Nick, we'll, we'll go with you. Technology, the things you offer for your team, because I think that has a lot to do with yeah. creating a team, right? And then offering that value. What are some of the things that stand out that you offer for your team? So obviously we offer a website with a CRM. Um, so I also, I have Ylopo and I also use team leads and the Ylopo right now is 100%. I use it just for mostly the lead generation, mm -hmm. uh, and the, and the nurturing, the nurturing takes place in agent legend. Um, as soon as they respond from that agent legend campaign and I start the pre-qualification process, um, I then transfer them over to their team leads account. And they can take it from there, set them up on the drips, call them, do the whole nines at the appointment. So we offer um, the CRM. We also offer marketing. So photography, if they get their own listing, um, we also the, offer the marketing, photography, video, the whole nine. Um, if they sell their own listing, we offer the just sold cards that can go out with their picture on it and their phone number. It's got our logo, but it says just sold by their picture and their name. I want them to... I want them to get a presence just as much as me if they sold a house. 
Um, I don't want to take that credit from them. Um, I allow them to claim their own sold properties on Zillow. Very non-traditional, like, you know what I mean? Everything obviously goes into me, it goes under me and the MLS, but on the outside, I want, their visibility only benefits the team as a whole. Um, so we offer all that technology and plus that visibility that, that they get when they, when they sell a home. Nice. How about you, Barry? Uh, we'll go to you. Unless you want me to go to Sunit first. Got it? No, you're good. All right. So tell me what that what, what you offer, man. What's the value proposition? What does it include? The value proposition is, um, well, the data is clear. Uh, if you don't respond to a lead within five minutes, uh, the percentage of likelihood of you reaching them goes down significantly. So uh, agents are kind of like, it's the tyranny of the urgent. Like they're constantly bound to that, that notification on their phone. And um, what I do is when the lead comes in, it's hitting follow up boss. I'm giving them um, an expensive CRM. And, uh, you know, Riley is reaching out. Riley's sending a text. Agent Legend is sending a voicemail. Seven months of emails go out that I've written. Uh, a video from me and Agent Legend, soft handoff, saying my team's reaching out. Um, so I've automated nine of the initial touches that we want to go out. Um, mm -hmm. And the whole idea behind it is for them to respond to the agent. Um, and, uh, and so I provide um, lead source, um, lead response. Um, and now with the ISAs, it's going to be uh, lead nurture. Um, and uh, the only thing I ask is that they spend time Monday through Friday in the CRM actually contacting leads. How do you keep following. track of that, Barry? Uh, Gmail boomerang uh, every day at I think it's two o'clock they get a woofoo form um, that says uh, how much time did you spend in follow-up boss whoa so I, I, track, <laughs> I track time I track number they, they have to select how many calls they made how many texts how many emails and then when they fill that form out it goes via it feeds into Zapier and uh, as you all know, I'm a Zapier nerd, and um, it feeds into a spreadsheet uh, where I'm able to see, because what was happening was agents are like, oh, I'm not selling that much. And so then I go to this dashboard, um, and there's like a chart of who's spending the most time, who's making the most calls and emails, and what would you guess happens with the person that spends more time following up? <laughs> they sell more, and consistently, the agents that are uh, filling out that form and uh, they're making the calls that I ask, again, Monday through Friday, because I'm trying to help them value the time, they're selling more. How um, do you verify that they're actually on though? Um, you mean like, if they're telling the truth? Yeah. So I don't, I don't they could be lying when they fill that out. Now, right. the, my follow-up boss, I, I am able to go into follow-up boss and actually see all of their activity. Like yeah, I'm able true. to see what they're doing and what they're not doing. But um, really, at the end of the day, there's a certain degree you've got to trust them, right? And the results are the results are the results. The only reason I'm doing the emails because I found that uh, it's helping them think about their day. Really, that's the whole purpose behind it is it's helping them analyze what did I do? I mean, you I know what that, that actually that actually increases your uh, good culture in your team too, man. I didn't. Yeah. That's yeah. that's pretty cool. So neat. What does yours look like, man? Leads and structure and so um. <clears throat> So I'm able to track everything through Sync, which I really like their tracking. What's data. Sync? Through Commissions Inc. All right. Um, which I like their dashboard, and I track it obsessively. Um, yeah, I do like their dashboard a lot. Um, and as far as what we provide, a ton of leads. I mean, pretty, I mean, we all have the same stuff, right? So, um, <laughs> that's pretty nice. Nice. Riley, Age of Legend, Call Action. Yeah, same stuff. You know, one thing that's helped that's helped us that that I, I started adding as part of the value was was those morning calls that I learned from, from coaching. Um, so I, I learned it from Michael Hellickson. So I got to give props to him. And he said, "Hey, have a morning call. It's called a morning huddle." I tweaked it a little bit. It's different, but the point is that I have a morning call. And probably like four out of five days. Cause I'm not very, I'm not five days. It's just, it doesn't happen all the time. But four out of five days, I am calling everyone around eight 30 and there's a topic. We either talk about certain dialogue, certain scripts, or we talk about something that's, that's been uh, happening that week uh, for the team. 
So it's really brought us together a little bit more. We have a team meeting, you know, once a month. Sometimes I'm not a big meeting guy, but we do have those calls religiously and that's helped our culture too. So that's something we offer. It's kind of like a, a small coaching call in the mornings. Yeah. I love the daily huddle and ours has the same structure every day. I go around to all the agents. I think there's about 17 agents on the huddle right now. And, um, what did you do yesterday? What are your goals for today? You need help with anything. So it takes up 30 minutes. And something else that I learned from uh, Michael is call night once a week. Everyone come. I'll get a couple of no-carb pizzas, I wish, um, and, uh, <laughs> and um, make our calls. And I'll sit in the room, too, and – that's another big thing I like. Jeez, man, it's all, it's almost twelve. We almost have to wrap up. I didn't even notice that. Let's go for another seven minutes or so. Uh, Nick, anything you want to add, team wise, that's really helped you grow? Because I, I love that you're so new as a team, but you're doing so well, man. And it's yeah, well, uh, we. What did you say? My wife said something snarky over there about about the, about Tristan complimenting me. Um, anyway, <laughs> we are, we're going to do, we'll probably sell about, we'll do about, no, we're going to do about, uh, 50 units this year, maybe give or take. Uh, we're, we're heading towards about 50 units for our first year. Um, and I wasn't, um, and so our volume for the, for a first year team will be about 15 million. I have a goal of 30 million next year. Um, and so far we're top 20% in our market center of about 235 agents. So I'm happy about that. What's but, the one thing, what's the, what's the one thing you think that is, that has been the reason for that? So it took me a few months to kind of like get used to being a team leader, right. And like being, being like a mentor to them. But I honestly think the consistency that I'm, that I'm, implementing into the team like twice a week in the office talking about what we're doing and how we need help you know telling guiding them on what they should be saying when they're calling leads reinforcing the buyer consultation so on and so forth um i really think it starts at the agent level um and once they get once they learn that consistency uh then everything is kind of smooth sailing in a sense so that's why we don't have a daily huddle but I, I asked them to send me a daily update because that is the one thing that I need them to be consistent on because I tell them this update is not for me. It's for you because if there's something that you don't tell me, if there's a client who isn't budging or isn't buying or someone's not pulling the trigger, like I need to know this so then I can help you succeed and move that forward. Everything is about them. It has nothing to do with me. I need, it, it's all about them and how I can help them. And this is why they need to do these things, um, you know, for me to, to help them get to the next level. So we've, we we're I'm going to add a six agent in the next several months. So, you know, I'm, I, you know, we're growing, the leads are coming in, the, the, the deals are getting done. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I love it. Sunit, what's the one thing that, that has been, the best thing that's helped you propel your team to where it is now? Um, knowing you three guys and everybody else, the lab code agents, being <laughs> a part of coaching, those two things have, I mean, as you, as you all know, like attributed to my, you know, quick success being an agent for like, you know, four years. And uh, since I became a part of the group and got a coach, I mean, I've just skyrocketed. So, I mean, that's the one thing for me. Nice. I'd ask Barry, but I don't think he can hear me. Barry? Barry's changing a poopy diaper. All right, you, All made, right. you just made it, bro. What, I'm asking, what's the one thing that you think has helped make your, uh, take your team to where it is now? Yeah, so I really like teaching, and I like managing, and I like helping. If you don't like those things, you can still have a team, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have like a ton of agents, right? Uh, you can hire admin and replace yourself as a salesperson and, and multiply yourself. But I'll tell you the thing that I think has helped grow the business the most is I really enjoy helping people find careers in business. And it, and a new team is more work and less money for a little while. I don't it know is. how long, hopefully it's not too long, but it is. And then you'll make the same money and have a better quality of life. That's true. And then 
you'll make more money and do what only you love. And that's where I'm at right now. And I really feel like I won the lottery. I mean, I'm doing what I love. I'm marketing, I'm lead genning, I'm managing, I'm teaching. Uh, and I'm not doing the stuff that I don't like, but people that, you know, they come to work and they're like, this doesn't feel like work. So uh, I would say that it's really just a self-assessment. What do you enjoy? And um, for me, it was just a really good fit. Nice. All right. Well, that's it. We, we finished right on the dot, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks again, Sunit. Barry Sunit, where are you located? That or beautiful Sacramento, California. Barry? Virginia Beach, Virginia. Nick? I'm in Montclair, New Jersey, baby. I'm in Los Angeles, California. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you, guys.